recording it. Okay, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. I'm Jennifer Roberts. Thank you for those people hanging in there. You are on my list of gratitude when I see that you're going nowhere and waiting patiently for returns, many returns. Uh, these energies have had us all back and forth, finding balance in chaos. And so this is a reading. Take what resonates, leave what does not for the week ahead, the week commencing from this weekend onwards into the following week. So it's the 12th of November today. This year is passing on by real quick and we are going into their new year. Uh, remember, we need to get back to the natural calendar, which is where we are um, becoming one again with the seasons rather than this calendar that's been placed upon us that works really well for corporations, works really well for death cycles of lives within lives in that we work our fingers to the bone against a natural current, against a natural seasonal current that would fill us up and have us much more to a, a, a organic clock. And so it's about finding uh, our holism, our, our holistic approach to navigating through these years very much so too, in that getting used to a different structure of time, a more natural structure of time, and how we spend our energy in any given season, bringing ourselves into alignment with nature around us, rather than perpetuating this idea that we are above or or supplant somehow the natural clock that everything else thrives towards you know flowers are navigating their way to it not being winter here in the uk not proper winter as we know it coming up in november there are plants still flourishing that a little while ago would have very much uh, gone to sleep for the winter season but they are just naturally acclimatizing not to time not to a calendar but to the seasonal change around them and adapting that way. So we need to navigate ourselves back to that as much as possible in all aspects of our lives to become more in alignment with everything and everyone around us. This helps us find balance in the chaos that keeps being um, manipulated and imposed around us. So I hope this gives you some guidance as we go ahead. I've laid out some cards for each day of the week coming forward from Monday onwards. Uh, and we'll see, we'll clarify throughout also as to how we navigate those best. So the first card for the Monday is the Two of Swords. They're okay. So the Two of Swords, this is in the traditional deck. Now this would speak to... Um, in other decks, it has a female blindfolded with a white blindfold, feet firmly planted on the ground. So speaking about grounding, speaking about finding a moment, being in the present, not looking with your eyes, but indeed feeling with the heart because the two swords are crossed uh, against the heart chakra area. And this is about feeling your way. There are two, two paths to be chosen from two trains of thought, thoughts being thought, words, intellect, um, wisdom to some extent, uh, depending on how you apply and use those words. But it is about feeling your way through the thought patterns in order to find the right path going forward. And on Monday, it will feel like a, a lot of chaos for many people that around them, the surrounding uh, environment or people around them are very chaotic. There's a lot of things going on. And in these moments, it's really hard to say, whoa, and, and sit firmly, square, with your feet grounded, uh, and feeling your way through uh, the various thought processes, the various paths that are opening to you, rather than um, being pushed and shoved and, and manipulated, forced, quickened into a path forward, into a decision going forward. And this is about applying wisdom to the thought process. This is about integrating those two aspects of self, the heart, the intuition, and the thoughts, and allowing that heart to um, give reason to those thoughts, 
and the feet firmly on the ground to give grounding to lower store, to stay very firmly grounded, uh, allowing the anxiety to release through the feet into the earth, allowing yourself to have a more clear thought process through the heart chakra, through the heart intuitive vibe. So going into Tuesday, we have the Queen of Swords. Now, the Queen of Swords, awesome dynamic card. She is a master, divine feminine master of the, the, the mind, the thoughts, the, the words, um, but she's in reverse. Now, in reverse, she doesn't suffer through gladly this Queen of Swords energy. Um, and this could be in yourself as a male. This is more of a divine feminine energy with it being a general reading, but also can be applied for those that resonate with this in the physical form of a woman. Yes, I said woman. <laughs> that still exists as a form in of itself. So in reverse, this speaks to um, the divine feminine energy uh, it speaks very much to a uh, suffragette type energy to me in that there has been this long standing attack and degradation of the, the woman, of the feminine energy. And uh, th there's this real balancing act of uh, the perception of what a goddess like energy, a divine feminine energy, should emanate and should uh, look like and sound like and feel like. And it is what it is a bit in that we are we're sort of are aware of the degradation of women, the sexism, the misogyny that surrounds us, above us, below us, around us, even within us as women. Um, but we try to pretend because we're terrified. We've done a very good job collectively of making it um, the mad banshee, the mad woman, you know, ranting on about we've got it better than we had that back then. Well, the suffragette energy that I pick up on very much so, the Joan of Arc type energy prior to that, would not stand for that. They would say, no, that this is a slippery slope. And in fact, we haven't advanced in ways that we should have advanced from the sacrifices we perceived to take and did take um, for the impact that we would have wished fully to, to have upon the collective uh, for each woman that is born into this realm. And so it speaks of, yes, this could be quite a narcissistic energy, a divine feminine, a womanly energy that is narcissistic in their own right, that is trying to impact perhaps going forward. But for me, in the reverse, on this Tuesday coming, it speaks of huge discernment regarding this two of swords, these two paths forward, and the impact that those paths will have, and also the wisdom of this divine feminine energy in reverse, which speaks of, we can't take much more. Um, you know, I'm mad as hell and we're not going to take it anymore type of energy. And a realistic energy, a very... Uh, uh, a women who are brave enough to say without the fear of the collective degradation that the suffragettes got just as much from the government, they got that from the people surrounding them and the misogyny within the collective that actually found it quite useful to keep women in the place that they were in. And so this speaks to a big energy, a big wave coming through that will be tarnished, that will be seen as a terrorist-like energy, as a um, hijacked feminist energy. But actually, this really is a, a fight for the perception of woman and, and the rightful place of that perception being separate to perceptions of others, like men, um, to having the right to have the words that would describe us in whatever language we speak as a, a physical form in of itself that cannot be replicated, that can be revered through people um, dressing as such when they are not physically a woman, but and it can be revered that way, and that's, that can be a personal choice and could even be a beautiful thing, but not to have this um, sneaky path forward, cheapened state of 
a a fear of women being judged as oh they are the witches they're they're feminists they're this they're, they're that um and also being degraded in the way from pretending like it's not happening pretending that it's so again it would look like on tuesday this thing is going to really rile up it's going to really raise up the whole um and I think, oh, did I knock that off? One second, I'm like, ah, I'm back. So this whole transgender thing and the ridiculousness that we're seeing on the screens um, over here in the UK and I presume around the world uh, of a hijack of, of what 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 pertains to be a woman, what, what can be a physical woman. And you would think that the answer would be very clear and um, that that answer is very clear that there are biological factors that create a womanly form here in this realm um, the divine feminine divine masculine aspects being completely a part of but separate to also the sexual orientation physical biology of a human form and so this feels like it's going to really rile up and it may be that there is some suffragette type action and to be fair the queen of cups comes up to clarify that card but on the wednesday the queen of cups is already there so it speaks about this reverse energy will be labeled will be tarnished this reverse energy of this queen of swords will be um the, all of the previous headlines that, that were going right back to the suffragettes will be reused will be uh, rehashed to create this perception of a scorned female that doesn't really have any right to be scorned because look what rights they have now. Um, and it speaks to wisdom coming in with that emotional aspect with the Queen of Cups being repeated here on the Wednesday, but the clarifying card on the Queen of Swords in reverse is also the Queen of Cups. So it speaks about engaging in uh, the wider thought process on the Monday with this two of swords, being able to see the impact of the path forward should things not be said or done in a timely fashion now regarding the divine feminine, um, the physical aspects that represent the divine feminine energy the most here being woman. Um, and it speaks to about incorporating those emotions that would bring forward a rage-like energy but to be quite frank that rage-like energy is goddessly it is in a goddess form of enough is enough that thou shalt not anymore um but it is a real fight it is a real because you're not just fighting those above you you really are fighting those around you and the perception that they've gotten comfortable with as to what is female, what is a woman. Um, and the hijack, again, through victimhood of a few being labelled, and that few, for the most part, that I can feel and see, don't even represent the true feelings. Those that are truly transgender or enjoy dressing in a feminine form actually are not part of this whole agenda that's being spewed out of them wanting to claim um fictional rights of being a woman i.e getting cramps having periods having and this in a way is born of real confusion with that queen of cups that wisdom comes in there a real confusion of not knowing thyself and being encouraged and manipulated and triggered to not know thyself and so the judgment card comes out to clarify this Queen of Cups on the Wednesday. Now, the judgment card, you can see it's these people absolutely naked, responding to this vibration, this sound, this calling. And they have come from a dark tomb. Uh, there's water in between and people just like them on the other side. And there's these rolling awakenings that we go through where judgment is called and it's it's where we let go of the judgments of others where we let go of the inhibitions of what we truly are and, and who we truly are and 
we rise from this grave, so to speak. We rise from the darkness of not knowing ourselves. But it speaks to those awakenings, those stirrings from the deep, dark grave, the shedding of everything that doesn't serve you anymore or that has just had its time is different for all people. And there are very different beings here in this realm. Some being used like a car by other beings that shouldn't be here and others that know exactly what they want to do or want to achieve here. And it speaks to, for me, these different vibrations are being called out throughout the universe right now, throughout these fractals of light where people are rising up, but actually we're going to see that that does not necessarily mean an awakening for what we would all perceive as good. A lot of these people are awakening to this very misogynistic energy towards the beauty and the prowess and the power of the divine feminine queen of cups. And the more suffer no fools gladly, queen of swords in reverse. And revering both aspects of that womanly form. So it speaks to being on opposite sides of the river for me, um, very much so, creating conflict in the collective. And you have certain people that are really, again, going back to that Monday, that two of swords, certain speakers, certain people around you that are really trying to make it about their awakening make their thought process like that's just knocking that off um rather than it being your organic awakening to whatever that might be in your life it's not just one awakening like it's being sold to a lot of people and boom that's it it's 5d consciousness from here on in bullshit and that has caused a lot of confusion over this whole movement of people that should have been a lot more powerful and a lot more um progressive than it has been enabled to be. But what will be will be and what should be should be. Um, but we will see. Let's uh, have a writing there, eh? So for Thursday, we have got the moon card in reverse. And this speaks to I'm an Aquarius moon. It speaks to um the Aquarian energy again very much like this indoctrinated view of what a powerful womanly form should look like and talk like and think like um with this queen of swords in reverse on the tuesday again these aquarians there's been a lot of um speak of in the spiritual community about oh we're going into the age of aquarius and there is this storyline biblical script being played out yet again only because we're repeating it but nevertheless uh that is going to create this Day of judgment, boom, and uh, that, that we're going to rise up and those that are chosen are going to live in this 5D consciousness and blah, 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 blah. And the script continues. The Aquarian energy to come into this realm and create more balance, um, more peace, more tranquility, more fairness, uh, would speak of an Aquarian energy that is very forthright, that thinks very differently and there are a lot of us here myself included that confuse many we are not like them and it is ancient ones coming back at this moment in time to be a part of what we feel should be this vibration this change and we look and feel and we act very and we think more importantly very differently to many in the collective and we are an oddity to them. And this is where the repetitive cycle of the um, the Jesus-like story, you know, that they know not what they do. And it's, it's like, we keep coming in and, and, and feeling the wrath of these many that we care about and that we ultimately want to understand and want to uh, be guided by and guide. But that is completely misunderstood and, and we feel we're coming to a point this week coming forward where the Aquarian energies have to get to a point of saying no shit's given you can keep repeating the old cycle the old script the old story that keeps repeating this cycle 
of degradation, of uh, manipulation, and of control by the few over the many. Uh, but there are these um, Aquarian like energies, or those that can vibrate at their strong wave points in their star system within them and around them and above them, that can integrate very different ways of being and thinking. And enough is enough kind of thing. We've been a little bit too nice about the whole thing. And uh, we are what we are, and we've come here to apply some changes. Now, the world card comes up in the upright to clarify the moon card in reverse. And this speaks to a whole new world, and it is a brave new world. And a lot of these things that are holding us back that are here to create what will ensue is, is huge amount of chaos and then finding that balance within the chaos because any big change will create that chaos because there are oppositional forces around you, even within you and above you and below you. But it speaks to this brave new world and remembering that this whole thing, because it is written, you know, in law, in, these are things that people like us just were around and fought to enforce or have written. Um, and really, the, at the time of their day, probably didn't get all of the privileges of such, certainly not the suffragettes, but they changed things. They planted seeds, they rebalanced and recalibrated huge things. And they were women from local streets. Uh, they were women who had implemented um, a force within them and around them that would not take no, and that was willing to be that moon in reverse, to be uh, the, the underground resistance, the organic resistance, not this resistance that you hear a lot of people speaking about of donate to me and be this resistance donate to me and be my resistance to what your resistance to what no this is was individual resistance to key factors not regarding any background color of skin uh belief system it was about certain is what it is right and privileges and that there was a difference that had been implemented by men for men around them, not even for the men on the ground, but the men on the ground very definitely took, allowed it also, as well as the women on the ground, allowing it also. And this, so there will be huge chaos and change and opposition, but that, when it is organic and not manipulated, unfortunately, will have a requirement to be a little bit more forceful than um, writing a letter. And so <clears throat> this is history being revisited with this moon card in reverse and this world card clarifying it in that when um, Emily Davison uh, got involved with the suffragettes, I mean, they've been fighting for over 30 years, peacefully writing letters, protesting peacefully, and they'd gotten nowhere. They'd gotten nowhere. Uh, and there had to be a clash, a crescendo of, of um, militant uh, like actions to be even listened to. And they didn't just put up with that most of all from the governments above them that were being torturous to them and have rewritten history about them uh, but they were tortured by those around them that wanted to maintain that feared this divine feminine womanly form that feared the power and the determination and, and wisdom behind these forms and it was that that um, punished them on the more daily basis and so this two of ones for Thursday, Friday. This two of ones for Friday is clarified by the full card and it does speak to the so, ma so many major arcanas here. The full card being another major arcana and it speaks to the two of ones being plans in action, um, things that have been gaining heat, that have been being mulled over, 
And again, it's that cross with the two of swords at the start of the week on the Monday, and on the Friday becomes this two of wands. And it speaks to ideas, um, it speaks to planning very much so, and gaining that um, energy, that fire for going forward into the three of wands, which would be implementing those plans. But to speak of those implementation of those plans, is that in the middle of this cross with the two of wands and then for the four cards to come up as a major arcana to clarify, it speaks of this being the zero point energy. Again, being very much guided by intuition, uh, by forces within self and pulling on from the outside of self, frequencies that resonate with this zero point, uh, you know, Private like cross uh, marks the treasure in the middle with going into this full card energy and being pulled from this very heart space that this full card has very open by these frequencies around you, within you, above you, and below you, and feeling that force, that drive going forward, and very much like the suffragette energy, get into that point of, you know, being willing to throw yourself off a balcony, being willing to just see where this path will go, because you know the path behind you is not good. The, the path behind you is not changing with the, with the way that you've been going thus far. And so it's about, you know, no fuck given kind of energy or let's just see what happens here because quite quite obviously it hasn't been working thus far and so these different plans that you've been implementing in your own personal life or on a wider scale it's about trying something new and a lot of people will be finding themselves, particularly with this movement energy, which I've said from the start, find your tribe, find the people within it, and then get out. Um, and I still got lassoed. It's been a whole movement of controlled opposition because the, the energies, the, the amount of people that were opposing, the not from a religious background, not from a... a a sex background, not from a culture background, but collectively just opposing those bottom lines of not seeing my granny, forcing something that hasn't been tested on me, you know, like, no, they very quickly had and already had things in place leading up from 2016 onwards to create a, an oppositional force. And so you'll see with this two of wands and this full card, with the moon card in reverse and the world card before it, you'll see a lot of people around you that have maybe been very active in what they would call the movement or a movement, depending on what country you're in, burning out from that and recognizing the wisdom of the real change happens organically as an individual and how I walk in this realm, how I present in this realm how I treat others and expect them to treat me. And this full card speaks of a lot of people have been getting burnt out. The spirit has been in the recognition of, all oh, right, okay, so this movement sounds very busy. It sounds like this is being done, that's being done, and this being done, but all under the guise of this peaceful, uh, new way of looking at protest um, in the, you know, we're using their system to try and fight their system. And so a lot of people have, have had the manipulation, the lies with this moon card in reverse uh, taken away, peeled away from them. They've had this two of one's energy of feeling active, but not active, not seeing the action or the plan going forward and reach that burnout stage. But with this full card, it speaks of walking away and that's, that's the sad thing as well in that we want those people to still be passionate in that zero point energy, to still be driven and not be burned out from wanting to create this change, but being more focused 
and, and less um, blindfolded to their own intuition and being less focused on other people's um, decisions and, and, and pushing and manipulation. So we've got the five of five of uh, coins, pentacles, for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday. Five of pentacles speaks to feeling outside of the loop, feeling outside of feeling a lack mentality. A lot of people licking their wounds, having been um, having been um, taken up by these energies, uh, thinking that they're going in the right direction to create change, and have given money to it, time and energy, and are recognizing that they they feel in lack because of it, they feel in deficit because of it, and that is on an individual basis too, with a lot of the relationships that are being built, there is this energy of, all right, okay, we came together forcefully uh, because the energies were sort of pushing those who didn't align with certain things that were being done forcefully. Um, but now actually we see that there is a lack here. There is a, there's not as much in common uh, at, from a soul level, from a spirit level, as there is the physical distractions that we got caught up in and came together for. And so there's this emptiness here. But in that emptiness, there's victory for those who choose to take it this Saturday with the six of wands. And this is going from the five to the six and the pentacles being money, uh, food, housing, physical things, relations with others, the, the things that you can feel and touch and see. Um, and a lot of people feel like with this full card on the Friday, uh, that they're almost feeling like they're leaving a cult, uh, that they're leaving cult-like uh, groups of people, uh, cult-like ways of thinking in their own right. And it creates initially this feeling of a deficit, of a lack of a shit, how much time have I wasted here or money here. Um, it does speak to the right questions being asked this Saturday. To the right people about where certain monies have gone um and this would speak to uh, a victory in an unveiling of a lot of that uh, knowledge as to where this money these monies have been going and it really does feel like it will cause this victory wave within a lot of individuals that resonate with this energy so where they've been feeling like they're riding out on a wave of feeling victorious of being able to see a way forward progress forward individually towards the right people. Now, the two cards that popped out for the end on Sunday, we've got the world card again. There's so many major arcanas here. This is such an intense, deep, raw energy. Uh, the world card again, and the death card decided to pop up with that. And it does feel like there's a lot of nakedness going on. We've got the world card here. We've got the judgment card here. Naked, naked, naked. Uh, naked under the moon. There's no nakedness on this, but it's about shedding the skin for this crab, shedding the shell, um, coming out of the water. And the moon energy always wants makes me feel naked in a good way. Um, where else is the nakedness? Nakedness on this world card and on this death card. It's a lot about stripping away the things that have attached to you, like barnacles, uh, the things that have uh, like uh, constricted you, that it, like skin on a snake that, that hasn't come off. It's been sticky and tight. There's a there's an unveiling of true self, of a truer form that you are from a soul level, not just a physical level. And it's about being authentic in that and using the energies, the fixed energies around you, that it, it is what it is, energies around you with these fixed um, signs here surrounding this divine feminine world card. And it's about not being afraid of the divine feminine energy that's coming through for me in this coming week is so prehistoric to those who that haven't witnessed it or have been manipulated to be afraid of it and not revere it. Um, to those that have been manipulated not to fear it and not revere it, 
it is a very prehistoric form to what a lot of these people that I've run into and the energies that I feel would even recognize. Um, and there's a lot there's a lot there to unpack, but it really does fall to those of us that know why we're here, um, both male and female, uh, to revere one another in our raw, very um organic state and be able to build from that going forward. Uh, there's a reason um a lot of uh, very connected hippie like movements have found a lot of importance about feeling comfortable uh, about being naked around one another and not just in a sexual way no but we have been indoctrinated to cover up to cover ourselves up physically emotionally mentally so much and not be um acknowledging of the raw beauty of self and also being surrounded by those around us that sting uh, if they see something that they don't like instead of them just accepting it or even going in the other direction from it they want to bite they want to sting so being naked and raw is a very um trusting state it's a very bond bond building state because it is a more vulnerable state physically and mentally and emotionally so there's reasons behind it i know a lot of people just do it for fun but there's reasons behind being able to be in such a safe zone with those around you even when you're not agreeable to other things your physical form your spiritual form is still revered and and left well alone and it's about recalling that. Um, we can only do that by being authentic and not being afraid um, of our authenticity, no matter how odd it looks to others or feels to others. And so there's a lot of death in this. There's a lot of reverse. There's a lot of death in this. And the death being a huge transition to really shed away those things that have attached to you and that you've allowed to yourself to attach to yourself, allowing them to die. And it really is the season for that with the trees that are reflected among us, just starting to lose their leaves and be in their raw skeletal self, uh, where you can see the outlines of the roots above in the branches and, and be able to see without seeing by seeing the above, the reflection in the below of the roots in the ground looking very similar. And so those roots in the ground though have to be able to dig deep. They have to be able to be structurally sound and, and right in there with the soil and, and twisted and, and turned and woven around each other to build a strength in order to stay raw in the above, to maintain themselves through winds, through sun, through rain in the above. And that speaks to us too. It's going to be a week of really digging deep, uh, really allowing ourselves to be the true organic form that, that, that is being released in a lot of us this week, that we are infusing into the collective around us this week. Um, and it's not without trepidation. I think those of us that resonate with this reading will feel that build up of that energy of like, it's not quite excitement, but it is. It's not quite fear, but it is. It's not quite trepidation, but it is. It's, it is and it isn't those energies, but it's just energies building for sure of um, being able to see the beauty within self and not be afraid to show it, but also not be attached with that death card to the judgments of others as to whether that is maintained as that being something that would maintain you through these energies that's not what you're seeking you're seeking validation of self by being self and being authentically you the beautiful raw you and all of these energies that are coming through this week in others around us aren't so beautiful to us they they are more authentically them but we do need to see that we do need to get to grips with the fact that there are many saying loudly one thing that they're fighting this, doing this, that they stand for this, and very much so behind the scenes being the complete 
opposite um, and we, we're squatting at that veneer, we're squatting at that body work that covers over a multitude of sins and a lot of it is about this divine feminine energy raising up in many of us and the masters around us that are in the male form in this realm are taking notice and will be there also within this rise up of energy to, uh, to be the explorer of that true divine feminine very organic form and that is a beautiful thing to work in conjunction with those especially when we're surrounded in both male and female form with such misogyny such sexism such judgment and such um a wanting of not just the status quo but a rollback of rights uh, for the woman attack the woman and you attack all forms that come from her it's always been the religious blueprint uh for a long long time anyway uh it has been the religious blueprint because once you do that you break up the family home uh, people don't know themselves if they can't revere their mother or revere a uh, womanly form that they could have come from then they can't revere themselves because every one of us has come from that womb, from that portal, uh, from a womanly form. So take out the mother, you take out and you can control everything that comes after it far more easily. And so, yeah, intense. Now we've got the world card for some of you on that Sunday. You will be surrounded by those that can't see you. You, you get in this there's a, this emotion that is being brought, a cup with everything in it uh, being brought from the heavens, in the ether, literally, in the invisible, uh, but it can't be seen. And that's, for some of you, that is you that isn't seen by those around you, three people in particular. Um, but it's also for you that are you still waiting for the wrong people to recognize what you can bring to the world to recognize all that you are. And if you are, then more to you at this point. Um, again, there has to be a detachment with this death card of where your investments lie, where your the importance as you place on things lie with this seven of pentacles clarifying this death card also for Sunday. Um, seven. It's about like the seven layers of hell, isn't it? This being able to go through all of those layers and and the brutal processes that create this energy, this beauty in death, uh, where you know you're letting go of the things that you've worked so hard to gain, and with that, more comes forward to you. Where the seven layers going up again. Because you've built, you've built on the seven layers going down, and you have the seven coming up again. Um, what else needs to be said? The death card speaks of also. I would speak with this world card. We've got two, three, two world cards. Death card, fool, moon, judgment. It does speak also to that uh, with the four of cups on the bottom of the deck and the empress. On the bottom of the clarifying deck, your words, your thoughts, your deeds create the reality that you live in. It really is about getting a hold with that two of swords on the Monday and that queen of swords and the queen of cups repeated twice over. And I'll get them all up here. It's about speaking about using your intuition alongside your thoughts, but actually being in much more control of your thoughts. What have I done now? Um, being much more in control of your thoughts and being able to create the, the reaction, the world that you want to live in, rather than uh, the world that you are living in being created by you. I haven't got a clue why that's gone off there. Let's see. What have I done? went relatively smoothly for not being on here forever. I'm back there. Oh, different camera. So a lot of changes and the death card, as I was saying just before there, before I knocked something off, 
it does speak of this metaverse type um death that I was speaking of, this entrapment of of souls in that metaverse. What am I doing? Why is it doing this? Um and th that's for another video, but that is big style this week too. And we will feel it. We will feel that it will also speak of death, you know. Death as an energy going forward is a gift and it has been so badly used. Um, it has been so um manipulated uh that there is a there's a price to pay karmically for that collectively and individually and i feel we're going to see a lot of death much more than we have done already in um some of these controlling factions of these few now they're going to try and keep quiet but that's going to really impact the world that we're creating and the the, the changes that we're making see how it goes leave a comment let me know if it resonated with you let me know how you're getting on in the week ahead again i will be um staying in touch um getting busier and there is exciting things coming up and that is no um cap on that that is me i'll be videoing those exciting things i'm taking a risk and going forward uh with a new opportunity and so i'm looking forward to that and it's much needed financially it is much needed uh so big love always bye bye now